As a Radiant Sentinel's main, a huge part of my playstyle, especially when attacking, involves lurking. So in this video, I'm going to be covering three different things. Firstly, what is lurking? Second, the different styles of lurking with some examples. And finally, I'll be covering the overall goals and effects that lurking has. Before we get too far into this video though, if you are new around here and you want to see more educational Valorant content, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. So first, what exactly is lurking? Lurking is basically when you use the pressure your team is putting on one side of the map to make a play somewhere else on the map. Whether it's walking through a site that the defenders have rotated off of, or cutting the rotations from those parts of the map to the part of the map where your team is at. When you lurk, you are effectively baiting your whole team, so making sure your lurk is as efficient and effective as possible is very important. So what are the different styles of lurking? Steel, the pro player for 100 Thieves, has talked about this in the past when he used to play CSGO professionally, and this is the two main styles of lurking, passive and aggressive. Passive lurks are lower risk plays that mainly help secure rounds when you already have an advantage, while aggressive lurking is a high risk, high reward playstyle that can result in creating the opening for your team to win the round. The goal of an aggressive lurk is to take advantage of the noise your team is making on the other side of the map by pushing onto or towards the part of the map that the enemy team controls. So normally this involves pushing deep into a site. When you're doing this, you're typically looking to take a gunfight with whoever is holding that site, or you're looking for a timing opportunity to catch the defender as they rotate off of that site. The best timing for an aggressive lurk through a site is right when the defenders are rotating off to go defend the site that your team is pressuring on the other side of the map. This can allow you to catch the defenders as they rotate out, or it can give you the opportunity to either take control of that site completely, or to continue pushing through the site and go through the defender's spawn and catch them as they rotate that way. By taking control of the site completely, you give your team an opportunity to disengage from the site they are pressuring and regroup on the site that you now control. And using this time where there's no defenders on the site, you can set up at a spot to cut off the rotations back to that site. So a good example of an aggressive lurk here on Haven would be doing something like caging the cross here, pushing up sewers, working your way up towards the site like this. Meanwhile, the whole time your team is over here at C and making noise outside garage, making noise C long, maybe smoking CT and garage. Basically making enough noise to force the defender at A to rotate off to help his team. Then you can start pushing through a site like this and either catch the defender as he rotates out or you can continue pushing through a site like this to go into the defender's spawn, catch the defenders as they are about to retake towards C. Or you could even do something like going through B here and catching the defenders over here as they are going to retake garage. This is just one example of an aggressive lurk that I have made many, many times, especially on this map as Cypher. The goal of a passive lurk is a bit more straightforward. You wait at a spot that can cut off common rotation points while your team pressures or executes on their site. The idea here is to catch the defenders off guard as they run through a part of the map that they believe they have control in. So making sure you aren't spotted or noticed in a passive lurk is extremely important. So for an example of a passive lurk, once again here on Haven, let's say my teammates are in garage pressuring the window, pressuring C site, and I have teammates pushing up long. I can then just walk up towards B like this. So with all that pressure, I can just hold a passive angle like this to wait for the defenders to rotate off of A and through a link through B site, and I can get a free kill here. And the reason that this is a likely rotation point is because it is the quickest way from A site to C site. If I wait a couple seconds and nobody is rotated through, I feel like maybe none of the defenders want to rotate through this way because they know they don't have control of B site anymore. You can then just walk through B site here towards C link, turning your lurk from a passive lurk to an aggressive lurk and go for a flank through the site to where the defenders are going to be retaking C site. So finally, what are the overall goals and effects of lurking? So lurking is something that you really only have to do a few times before the defenders will start expecting it. This can actually be a good thing as long as you don't get predictable with your lurk, as the pressure of a lurker will stay not only within the round itself, but this pressure also carries over to the other rounds. 
This can lead to mind gaming the defenders as they might be expecting you to be lurking when in reality you might be setting up for a 5 man execute with your team. Especially if your lurks have been working, the defenders are forced to respect that and either rotate differently or have more than one person look for you as they rotate. And understanding that the defenders are aware of your lurks and are potentially looking out for that is part of the mind gaming and decision making that is involved with being a lurker. Lurking is a very dynamic role and knowing the timings of a good lurk and knowing when to switch between a passive and aggressive lurk is something that will come mainly with experience. 100 Thieves, Steel, and Sentinels Dapper are great players that I recommend you guys watch who have a lot of experience with lurking. So if you want to watch pro level lurkers, then I definitely recommend you guys check them out. Studying great players in addition to playing the game yourself is a great way to improve at different aspects of the game. So that is all for this lurking guide. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something. And if you want to see more Valorant guides like this, then make sure you let me know in the comments. Leave any ideas you might have down below. I definitely want to continue making guides like this. And if you enjoyed this video, then make sure you subscribe so that way you never miss my educational Valorant content.